Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I'm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, downtown off of the main circle at the Swope Mansion, which is a bed and breakfast, is beautiful. It's a home that was built prior to the Battle of Gettysburg, and so it was on the front lines during the first day of the battle. I'm here on the third floor of this bed and breakfast in front of the Lieutenant Pullman chamber. Each room in the bed and breakfast, as you might imagine, is named for someone. There's a General Meade and President Abraham Lincoln, Stonewall Jackson and other suites. But this is the Lieutenant Pullman chamber and it's named for the officer who is pictured over here. And this officer, he was critically wounded during the battle and this house is the place where he succumbed to his injuries. So I want to take a few minutes just to tell you his story so we can put the face of a Union officer with the battle and with all of you. So I want to take you now to July 2nd, Cemetery Ridge, which is just up the road from here. The battle during the first day and into the second day took a, a terrible toll on the 59th New York Infantry. There's only one officer left standing on the field, and that's the gentleman pictured here, Lieutenant William Henry Willie Pullman, as he was known. He was the regiment's adjutant, and he was only 21 years old, first lieutenant. So according to one newspaper report, quote, young Pullman was everywhere, cheering and inciting his men by his own example of deeds and noble daring. Pullman's path to Gettysburg began in 1842, 21 years earlier, with his birth to Christian missionaries on the island of Borneo. A few years later in India, Pullman's mother died in childbirth, leaving him in care of his father. His widowed father sent him and his sister back home to America where they arrived in Albany, New York, and were raised by their Aunt Elizabeth. Pullman grew up and entered Rutgers University in neighboring New Jersey in 1859. His goal was to study theology and to follow his parents into missionary work. But the war interrupted his plans. After the bombardment of Fort Sumter and a patriotic speech by the president of the college, young Pullman decided to cast his lot and ultimately his fate with the Union Army. In May 1861, he joined the 1st New Jersey Infantry, and then he moved to the U.S. Signal Corps before accepting a second lieutenant's commission in the 59th New York Infantry. He joined his new command in October of 1862 and quickly gained the respect of his peers and the trust of the enlisted men. Months later, in May 1863, he was promoted to first lieutenant and adjutant. So a pretty quick rise for a young man a college on a college break, really. On July 3rd, 1863, here at Gettysburg, he and the rest of the 59th joined other federal forces in the defense against Pickett's charge. At some point during the assault, an artillery shell struck him and fractured his left shoulder. That same newspaper that said he was all over the place and encouraging the men, that same newspaper quoted that his comrades entreated him to withdraw to camp. But he answered, quote, not while I have my sword arm left. About an, after, an hour after that, his sword arm was disabled by a shot, a gunshot through his wrist which severed one of his arteries, and faint and bleeding, he was reluctantly compelled to retire from the field. According to another source, he left his regiment and his men with words of encouragement. Quote, boys, stay in your places. Your country needs every man of you. That was it for Pullman on the battlefield. He received initial treatment at the Second Corps Field Hospital and then was taken here to the Swope Mansion to recuperate from his injuries. The prognosis at first seemed good. In fact, on July 4th, Independence Day, the day that the Confederates retreated 
after the Union Army won the battle on July 4th, he mustered the strength to scrawl a note to his sister. And he said, quote, I bear honorable wounds in my country's cause. The wounds are slight, but still forbid my using a pen at present. I shall soon write again concerning my whereabouts. Until then, farewell, end quote. His wounds did in fact prove fatal and he succumbed to his injuries here in the house on July 21st, about a little more than two, two and a half weeks after he wrote that scribbled letter to his sister. His remains were embalmed and sent home to Albany, New York, and buried in the Albany Rural Cemetery. There was a sword that Pullman carried into battle that disappeared at some point in the chaos and confusion. But the scabbard, which had been dented and stained with his blood, made the trip home with him. And so that's the story of Lieutenant and Adjutant William Willie Pullman of the 59th New York Infantry. And we're right here in front of Lieutenant Pullman Chamber in the Swope Mansion, the place where he succumbed to his injuries in July of 1863. So till the next episode, take care.